a projectile is fired from the edge of a cliff 95 meters high with an initial speed of 50 meters per second at an angle of 37 degrees above the horizontal. A. Determine the maximum height reached by the projectile. So the first thing we're going to do is to write down our given information. So we know our initial velocity is 50 meters per second. The projectile is fired at an angle of 37 degrees above the horizontal. We know the vertical acceleration is equal to g, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We know that the horizontal acceleration, ax, is equal to 0 meters per second squared. And we're told the cliff is 95 meters high, so our initial vertical position is 95 meters and our initial horizontal position we can assume to be 0 meters. From the basic motion of a projectile we can tell when it reaches its apex its horizontal velocity remains the same but its vertical velocity at the time is equal to 0. So Vy of the apex is equal to 0 meters per second and we're trying to solve for y. Now an actual diagram for this situation would be here. This is the ground level. Here's our cliff. We have a projectile here which is going to be fired up into the air above this 95 meter high cliff in a direction here which makes an angle of 37 degrees as we've said before and has a magnitude of 50 meters per second. It's going to follow a trajectory along these lines until it hits the ground down here. Now we want to know the highest point that it reaches so we want to know this height above the ground here. So we're going to use Vy apex squared is equal to Vy squared plus 2a delta y. Now we know Vy the apex we know v not y, we know 2, and we know a y. So we only have one unknown as to what is delta y. Well, we also know that delta y is of the form y minus y naught, which we know y naught, and now we just have to solve for y. So we first have to subtract v not y squared from both sides which will give us 2ay times y minus y naught is equal to vy of apex squared minus v naught y squared. We now divide both sides by 2ay, giving us y minus y naught is equal to vy apex squared minus v naught y squared over 2ay. If we now add y naught to both sides, y is equal to vy apex squared plus v naught y squared over 2ay plus y naught. Now if we plug in our given values. V of the apex is 0 meters per second minus v naught y is 50 meters per second times the sine of 37 degrees squared over 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared plus 95 meters. If we now calculate this out, this will give us a total of 141 meters. So the highest point we reach in our trajectory is 141 meters above the ground level. So this height here is 141 meters. But B says determine the total time in the air. So in order to do this, we're going to do this you can do this one of two ways. So when it's fired up, the ball will follow directly like this. So you can split it up and solve for the time it takes to go this distance and then the time it takes to go the rest of that distance. So you would get T1 and T2 and then you have to add those together to get T total. Or you can simply do it for the entire trip. We can simply do one time and it'll take up for the entire trip which fits t total. So that's what we're going to do here. So using the equation y equals y naught plus v naught y t 
plus one half a y t squared, we can solve for the total time for the object to land. Knowing that y naught is equal to 95 meters and knowing y is equal to 0 meters. Because when we hit the ground, the bottom of the cliff, be 0 meters. So knowing that, we can then rewrite this form as 1 half a y t squared plus v naught y t plus y naught is equal to 0 because we can ignore this term because it's 0. So we have it of this form. Now, v naught y has a value and a y also has a value. So now we've come into a problem where we have one term which is quadratic with respect to t and one that is linear with respect to t. This now, if you remember back from your algebra classes, is the standard form of a quadratic equation. So a x squared plus bx plus c equals zero is the standard form of the quadratic equation, where x, where t in this case is x, and a y is one half a y, b is v naught y, and c is y naught. To solve for t, we now have to use the quadratic equation, but we're going to sub in our different values here. So we know a is equal to one half a y, b is equal to v naught y, and c is equal to y naught, and x is equal to t. So the quadratic equation usually has a form of x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We're now going to change this equation around by plugging in our values here to get t is equal to a negative b which is v naught y plus or minus the square root of v naught y squared minus 4 times 1 half a y times c which is y naught all over 2a a being 1 half a y again if we now plug in all of our values, we would get t is equal to negative 50 meters per second, sine of 37 degrees, plus or minus square root, negative positive 50 meters per second, sine 37 degrees, minus 4 times 1 half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared, times y naught which is 95 meters and all that is over 2 times 1 half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared now if we carry out all of this we would get a value of a positive 8.4 seconds and you would also get a negative answer but we're only caring about how long it takes for the object to reach that point. So we only care about the positive answer here. So that's why we only take the 8.4 seconds to be our time. So our time to reach the bottom of the cliff is 8.4 seconds. Part C says determine the maximum horizontal distance covered by the projectile. So for this, we're going to use x equals x naught plus v naught x t plus one half a x t squared. Now we know that x naught is equal to zero, so we can cancel that term. And we also know that a x is equal to zero, so we can cancel that term. So we're left with x is equal to v naught x times t, where x is equal to v naught x is equal to 50 meters per second times cos 37 degrees times a time of 8.4 seconds giving us x is equal to 335 meters so the horizontal distance that we have covered in that amount of time is 335 meters Part D now says determine the velocity of the projectile just before it hits the bottom of the cliff. In order to do this, we have to determine the components, so Vy and Vx of the projectile just before it hits the ground. So for Vy, we know Vy is equal to V0y plus Ayt. So Vy is equal to, V0y is 
50 meters per second, sine of 37 degrees, plus negative 9.8 meters per second squared, times 8.4 seconds to hit the ground, which would give us a Vy equal to negative 52 meters per second. Vx, we know, is given of the form Vx is equal to V naught x plus Axt. We know Ax is equal to 0, so we can cancel out this term, giving us Vx is equal to V naught x. V naught x is 50 meters per second times the cos of 37 degrees, giving us Vx is equal to 40 meters per second. Now that we have determined the components of the velocity at the end of its trip, so we have determined Vx, and we have determined Vy, we can now determine the resultant velocity, V, based off of the Pythagorean theorem to solve for it. So off the basis of this triangle here, we can now solve for the magnitude of V. So knowing V squared is equal to Vx squared plus Vy squared, we take the square root of both sides, we get v alone, so v is equal to the square root, vx squared plus vy squared. Now if we plug in our values for vy and vx, we get v is equal to the square root of negative 52 meters per second, square that, plus 40 meters per second squared. If we now calculate this out, we would find that our velocity at the bottom of the cliff is equal to a 66 meters second. So there we have found that the velocity of our object at the bottom of the cliff is equal to 66 meters per second.